Oh, snap! Ow, did you just see that? Hey b -Buts, I'm back and today we're going to be checking out a new line of dolls from MGA called Secret Crush. As you can see, I have two different cases here today. The large, which costs $40 in the US and $60 in Canada, as well as the mini, which is $10 in the US and $15 in Canada. Now as you can see, I can't reach anything because the large case is just so big I had to push it way far back in order to even get most of it on the screen. So I think we're going to open that one first, just so that we can bring things a smidge closer. So let's just get this out of the way. And here we go. This is the large secret crush case in all its glory. Essentially what we have is a large pink plastic heart with a cute little marshmallow hammer on the side. Each of these large secret crush cases will come with two dolls. Today I'm gonna be opening Pippa Posey and she's gonna come with Millie Dollops. And then on the back of the package you can see the other large set that includes Sunday Swirl and Winnie Waffle Cone. And now all we have to do is open it. But first I'm gonna fix the camera because it turns out you can't see anything. There we go, that's better. Yeah, so last time I tried to pull it off and I almost broke the case. So we're gonna learn from my mistakes and uh, use the utensils that were invented for opening the things. Okie dokie. So now we've got our instructions and the plastic jibbers are now visible. Jibber one, jibber two. And there you go, your freed case. And now the rest. Ugh. Ow. These are legitimately the tightest zip ties I've ever tried to cut. Like that just pierced my skin. Like you can't even fit anything under that. Oh. And now we have tape. Oh my beautiful nail ball is just coming off. I think I finally got it. And now we test. Oh crud, you can't see again. No, that's too far too, what the heck? I'm either too far away and you can't see or I'm too close and you can't see. So this is the best of both worlds, like Hannah Montana. Okay, that's what we're going with. And now we open. Yes, I did in fact get all of the tape. Wonderful. And this is what we're left with. Underneath the lid, we have a thick plastic cover and two pastel pink hearts in the center. And these are the parts we're supposed to break with our little marshmallow hammer. And go. I feel so bad, like I'm smashing this poor little guy's face right against it. I know toys aren't real, but Toy Story convinces me that this hurts him. And so does his face. Like, look at it. He's terrified, literally. But the show must go on. All right, that's good enough. Now, I'm not positive what this stuff is made out of, the area that we broke off with the hammer, but it does feel kind of like clay. And I know this because it feels like something I don't like, but I'm not positive. And the idea of breaking it, although cute, it has nothing to do with the actual packaging because we still have to take this front shell off in order to free our doll. So what I'm getting at here is if you don't like the idea of breaking that and you want to keep those cute hearts forever, then just don't break it. Instead, take the elastics off the sides because you literally have to anyways and now you have access to your doll. Psych! You're gonna have to turn it around to untie the twine. And now we can remove our doll. Oh no, something else is holding her in. What is it? There we go. And move her off to the side for just a second to show you the inside of the case. After we remove the elastic bands, you're left with an empty sideways heart with two holes at the back. And this is where we're gonna attach the doll stand so you can display your doll when you're done. But unfortunately, you won't be able to display your mini doll because there's not a second stand or little shelf or anything like that. And once you clean up your little heart lid, you will attach it back onto the front so that you can replace the outer lid like so and have it for displaying. Just make sure you remember to clean off your stickers and you're good to go. And now it's time to free the rest of our stuff, starting with the doll. This might be easier if I lie it down. There's a lot of little straps and plastics holding her in and I'm trying to get to them carefully so I don't damage anything, but they are very, very tight. There we go. She's free, she's free. Let's just set her to the side and then we punch out the pink and yellow hearts to get our surprises, and we're finally done with the packaging. But before we check out the doll, we will take a look at the paper in my hand, which is the collector guide for both the large case and the minis. So on this side, you have a very weird mixed up picture of the two large crush cases and who you would get inside them. So if you cut it all up and put it back together, you'd have yourself a mini poster. And on the back, we have the 12 different dolls available to collect, but the Millie Dollops and Winnie Waffle Cone dolls are exclusive to the large places. 
sets. And I think that's important to point out because up until right now where I see the tiny writing, I thought you could get all of them in the mini sets, but it's not the case, unfortunately. And now we're gonna move on to our doll, but since this isn't gonna cut it, we need to change the camera. And now we can check out Pippa Posey. She has a light skin complexion with pastel pink hair, which is pulled into one pony on her left side and the bottom opens to give us a surprise. Put that back on. And then on top, she's got some buttercream rosettes with a dollop on the right and a teal and lime green bow. And once again, this is gonna pop off to expose the inside of her brain and a surprise. Let's cover that back up. It's a little unsettling. Her face is pretty simplistic with two black eyes, a heart-shaped pink mouth, and the lightest dusting of blush on her cheeks. And it kind of reminds me of a really cute Funko Pop. She comes wearing a colorful layered dress that reminds me of a cake. So on top, we have white with piped frosting, lime green beadwork, a pink layer, a white piped frosting layer with glitter, a teal layer, and then more piped white frosting with glitter. And so far, the glitter is not coming off, which makes me pretty happy. The pattern of her dress carries around all the way to the back and she also has a removable plastic bow which is a teal color with a lime green center and there is another surprise in here so I'm just gonna take that off and you can see she also comes wearing long white glittery stockings with a lime green ruffle with a light pink band on top with bows which match her little ballerina flats and as you can see she stands on her point which is why this is so difficult for me to hold up and why her stand is definitely a necessity but before I put her in that doll stand, I do want to show you how easy it is to remove her clothing and show you she also comes wearing a two-piece underset of a little bra and panties and they've got hearts all over them, some of which are broken. And as you might have noticed, the dress is basically a large, thicker version of an LOL outfit in the sense that it's open at the back, making it easy to put on and take off of your doll. Now, that's kind of cool to me, but realistically, unless you have both dolls, you're not really able to change your clothes, unless you know how to make clothes because you're fancy like that. Before I put that back on, I'll quickly show you that she has some movement in both arms, as well as the head, although it doesn't tip side to side very well when she's wearing the dress. Maybe just pretend she's at the beach and lying down in a bathing suit. Oh, maybe I was wrong. We can move her a little bit, at least back to front. Let's put her down for just a minute and we'll get that pink piece from earlier so that we can attach it to the case and display our doll. Now you snap on your outer shell, which by the way looks completely terrible since the majority of the shape fell off, and you can attach the outer lid so that you could store this. And if you're hoping that you could do this without that, sadly the answer is no. You do need that shell piece in order for the lid to stick because it has the holes. So personally, I'd recommend cracking off the rest of the clay bits and then filling it with glue and beads or glitter or something that makes it look more like a heart outline again and you should be good to go. I personally think it looks terrible, so I'm just gonna take that off. And we can move on to the rest of the surprises. And here they are. So we're gonna start with this one here, which I think came out of her ponytail, but I can't be certain. It is pearlescent and adorable. There's a cute little buck tooth character on the front and it looks sort of like a liquid inside a bag. I'm not too certain. Now, before I open this, I will quickly mention that this could have been just as cute had it been done in tissue paper, but since we do have it and I wanna put it to use once I'm done, I'm gonna carefully open it at the back. That way I can stuff it with some fluff or even more plastic later and add a piece of tape so that we have some pretend candy. Inside the first bag, we have Millie Dollop's body. Stick the top to the bottom, and there we go. And we will check it out once we find her head. Here's the second bag, and this is the one from her head. It's a pearly, yellowish, bluish, greenish carrot shape with a cute little face on the front. Inside we have her dress. It looks like it's piped out of frosting and it's pearly white and teal. There's a little bit of color down at the bottom, but other than that, it's all right. And here's what it looks like on the doll's body. It's basically a one-strapped dress. Next up, I will open this one, which has four different surprises in it. The first two pieces, when combined, create the doll's hair. One side is transparent and the other is pearly and creamy. And it's gonna stick right into the top of her head when we find it. Okay, scratch that. We have two, so it's not gonna go in the top of her head. We're gonna get pom-pom dollops. I guess I should have remembered this. I saw her on the front of the packaging. It slipped my mind. Here is the next blind bag. Once again, it looks like candy. There's two cute little dollop characters on the front. 
And inside we have her head. Oh, it's so cute. All right, let's go ahead and stick that on. And there we go, Millie Dollops. She's got a pale skin complexion and two-toned hair of pearly white and pastel yellow. And she comes wearing a teal headband, which is going to match her dress. Just like the larger doll, she too has a simple face, except she does have a bit more going on in the form of an open mouth with a tongue. Let's quickly take off her dress. Ah! Ah! That's one way to do it. Put that back on. All right, underneath her dress, which you can remove without disassembling her body if you were more careful than me, she comes wearing a grayish pair of underwear as well as a light blue bralette. She's also wearing some pearly white ruffled ankle socks and teal ballet shoes. Put that back on. Now all we have to do is add her hair and ah! And here's what she looks like for now. These dolls here can move the head 360 degrees as well as knot it and tip it side to side. And we can also move the arms and legs. The last thing we have to check out is the bow that came on the back of Pippa Posey's dress. And it opens like so to reveal another plastic blind bag. On the front of this one, we have a stretchy rubber cord and it's pink. And then inside the bag, we have all kinds of madness in the form of beads. No, they're rolling away. Okay, careful. These colors are super, super cute, but I'm gonna hold it so they don't all fall. We have pearl little balls and they are blue and a purplish pink color. And then we also have little stars, which are a pearly blue and white. And since they gave us the stretchy cord, you can use these beads to make a bracelet or you could fill up your doll's hair with them, which is what I'm gonna do right now. One and two. And there you go. That's what they look like when they're attached. Now, according to the instructions, you could also add pieces of the shell that you crushed to this or if you do want to use the beads to make a bracelet then you might consider filling the hair with pieces of tissue paper or even little pom-poms or crumpled up wrapping paper which would be really cute since it's pearlescent or you could skip it entirely and leave them empty now since we're done with the doll I will show you one more thing this little hammer right here you remember him from the beginning right if you twist the stick you can pull it out and have yourself one more cute little character which means technically Technically, you end up with three in the large set. Your mini, your hammer, and of course, the big doll. And now we move on to the Secret Crush minis. This one says, crush the outside, unwrap your doll, fill her head with beads, or make a bracelet, or what have you. And we open. Oh no, I could have chosen a better place to cut, I suppose. My nails are already garbage, so we might as well just go at this. I kind of prefer the way the hammer is placed on these dolls compared to the large ones, because at least we could just slip it back in the side after, whereas the other handle is just empty if you chose to take your character off of it. How the heck? Ah! Be careful when opening these zip ties, guys. Oh, why'd they go through there? I guess so that nobody steals it, but come on. Oh, snap! Wow, did you just see that? That legit just broke. Wow, a pair of scissors. And these are heavy duty scissors. They're my gen scissors. Oh, I'm so sad. Okay, at least it opened it, but holy. Oh, I can't get it out. Ugh. And there's still one more. What the heck am I supposed to use now? Okay, I will be right back. That sucks. Round two, new scissors. That was so ridiculous. All right, all the jibbers have been de-jibbed. All the tape is hopefully removed and now we can open our case. And inside we have another clay heart to bash and this time it's a minty green color, but it's really cute. I don't like crushing it. Will we have to pull it off again? Oh, this time we actually do have to crush it because there's nothing that we can lift. Where is there? Wait. Can we? In the name of science, I shall find out. This feels like a chocolate shell. Don't eat it, because it's not, but it feels like it. It also feels like soap. It feels like so many things. Oh, it's glued. Oh, it's so close. Come on, so close. That is a really strong glue. I need whatever they're using. Hey, I did it. Okay. I don't want to smash this. I've decided I'm not going to. I'm sorry, guys, but there's a lot of mess going on here already, and I've already broken my scissors, okay? So I think, I think enough things have broken today. So at some point, I will clean up this glue a bit better so that we can actually keep this. But for now, we're just going to ignore it and pull out the plastic heart that has the beads in it. Ooh, very neon. We've got broken heart halves of pink and neon orange, and then we have some small red round beads of pink and yellow. And then the same stretchy cord. And underneath we have our surprises. So we got one, two, three, 
four bags, and our collector guide. And it's the exact same as the first one we got. Anywho, now we can open the surprise bags, starting with this one first. It looks like a jar of melted chocolate, and it's got some sprinkles coming out of the top of pink and yellow, and there's a red lid. There's a cute little face on the front. Oh, that's so cute! The first bag contained our outfit. It's a two-piece, but it's held together in a one-piece, and for some reason, that makes me really happy. The upper portion is a white pearly tank top with a pastel neon orange broken heart, and the bottoms are pink shorts with white sprinkles and a yellow band running along the cuff to match the suspenders, which are held on with blue heart-shaped buttons, and on the back there are two little pockets. Next, I'll open this bag, which looks like an ice cream sundae. So we've got some mint and white ice cream with melted chocolate on top and sprinkles. Inside we have the two pieces that make up the doll's hair and it forms two scoops of ice cream. So there's white and mint ice cream and then a transparent light blue section on top with a signature ice cream swirl. And there's also some scattered sprinkles of pink and yellow. This bag here looks like a little bonbon or wrapped candy. It's got white and teal stripes with two pink ends. We've got our doll's body, snap it together, and there we go. Now we just need her head, which is going to be in this last blind bag here, and this one has white and green stripes with little pink ice creams all over. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, okay, so, so cute. Is this the one I wanted? Oh, I hope so. Inside we have our head, add it to the body, and now we can check her out. Her hair is mostly a pearly white with one large minty green streak in the front, and there's a little swoop just beside her left ear. She's got a little winking face, one eye closed, the other open. She's got light blushing on her cheeks, and her mouth looks as though she's saying, oh. Just like the other dolls, she has a light skin complexion and comes wearing a two-piece underset. These ones are a light minty green color and she also comes wearing long pearly white knee-high socks except that hers have two pastel orange stripes on top and minty green converse like runners but still on point and of course she'll be able to move at her arms legs and her head giving us five points of articulation and technically I just realized this we have the ability to turn her at the waist just do it carefully so that her body doesn't pop apart here's what she looks like in her outfit and now all I have to do is fill her hair up with beads Whoa, 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 whoa. You definitely want to get a good mix of all the colors in there so you can see it through her hair. Okay, don't fall, stay. Please don't drop. Okay, there we go. That took some work on my part. <laughs> okay, she's actually super cute. You'll either be really happy with their hair or super annoyed by them. For now, I'm at the, I think they're adorable stage because they haven't annoyed me too much yet. But we need to know who we have. Oh my gosh, okay, okay, okay. So the first big set that I opened, I noticed there was Tilly Twist and I really wanted her because I love her minty hair and I just thought she would be adorable to have. So when I started to open this and I saw her hair was minty, I got super excited. I was like, wait a minute, that might be her. But then I saw all of the neon stuff come and I was like, oh, maybe it's not her. I guess I just didn't focus too much on her clothing. It was all about the hair. And now I'm really happy. I kind of fished my wish, if you will. Super adorable. And you can definitely store these easily back inside the case when you're done. And that includes the lid, which makes me wish that they did that for the larger case because it just makes more sense not to have that ugly layer in between. Now let's turn this into a character. Oh, that one's firmly attached. I guess for the minis, you can't make a secondary character out of the little hammer. It's gotta stay on as such. Which, I mean, it's not as big and bulky, so I guess that's okay, but it still would have been cute to have that as an option. Now, as for the doll, she does not stand up, as we know, because she's on pointed toes, so it would be nice if they added a stand in the back like they did for the big case, but at least we've got a case that closes, so I'm not gonna gripe on that too, too much. Wait, why am I closing that? Never mind. And just before I end, I want to mention, because I almost forgot, that the large dolls can actually be put into a seated position. I wanted to make sure I pointed this out because because when I opened my first doll, the legs were actually glued together and very stiff. There was no movement whatsoever, and so I assumed that all the large dolls would be like this, but it turns out I was wrong. Okay guys, that is it for the secret crush dolls. My overall thoughts on these dolls are that they are incredibly cute and that the concept of them is very creative. There were one or two things I would change about these products as a whole, which definitely includes the packaging. I really think those could have been tissue paper and still been just as wonderful. When it comes to either their product, I definitely hope they choose to add a small stand for the mini dolls because right now they kind of just 
fall. If we were to disregard everything that I just said and focus only on the quality, I would say I'm really happy with how these turned out. And now, the rest is up to you. You've got to decide what you liked or didn't like about any of the things you saw today and if it's enough for you to want to purchase them for yourself or for somebody you love and care about. Hopefully you guys find something interesting about this review and it's helpful to you if you choose to buy one. And yeah, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.